night everybody welcome to our prayer meeting and our bible study and we're still in the month of resurrection amen bless the name of jesus we are going to begin tonight amen by singing a, a few prayer refrain then into prayer and then after prayer the next voice you will hear is our dear teacher evangelist Shonika, and we'll be continuing in um the book of matthew amen bless the name of the god so for those who are on tiktok we greet you those on facebook we greet you amen persons on youtube we greet you in the name of jesus our soon coming king hallelujah hallelujah creating me a clean heart oh lord and renew the right spirit within me creating me a clean heart oh lord and renew the right spirit within me cast me not away from thy presence O lord and take not thine only spirit from me restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew the right spirit within me creating me a clean heart O oh lord and renew the right spirit within me come on say creating me a clean heart O oh lord and renew the right spirit within me cast me not away from thy presence O lord and take not thine only spirit from me restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew the right spirit within me and renew the right spirit within me oh cast me not away from thy presence O oh lord and take not thine only spirit from me restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew the right spirit within me hallelujah he is worthy to be praised tonight glory be to god for every person as you're online bless the name of jesus we want you to worship god with us we want you to sing along amen glory be to his name hallelujah glory be to god he is here hallelujah he is here amen he is here oh holy i will bless his name again he is there listen closely hear him call lean out your 
name. He is here. You can touch him. You will never be the same. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He is here. Holy, holy, I will bless his name again. He is a listen closely, hear him call, read out your name. He is here, you can touch him, you will never. Ver be the same. Come on, somebody go ahead and worship him. Bless the name of Jesus, mighty God. We lift you up tonight because God, you are the great Elohim. We worship you tonight, Adonai. We give you all the glory, the omniscient, the omnipresent. We worship you tonight, mighty God. We thank you for your grace that is sufficient. Mighty God, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for you who are and you who is and forever will be. Mighty God, we lift you up tonight, God Almighty. We salute you, kings of kings, Lord of the Lord, you are worthy of our praise, mighty God. There is none to compare to you. There is none like you. There is none above you, mighty God. But all other gods are beneath you. And Lord, we worship you tonight. The Prince Emmanuel, we lift you up. Jehovah, we lift you up, mighty God. The God of the three Hebrew boys, the God of Daniel. We lift you up, the God of principle, the God of covenant. We worship you tonight, God, the God who blew breath into man and man come to life. The one who formed us from clay. God, we lift you up tonight, God. We worship you, you magnificent God. You are supernatural. You are amazing. You are beautiful. You are wise. And we say, God, we love you tonight. Hallelujah. Mighty God, we love you, mighty God. And God, we love you so much because you have shown us in your word that you choose us before we even choose you. You know us before we even know you. And God, only somebody that have a love of unconditional, mighty God, will love somebody without even them choosing them. And God, we thank you for choosing us. Mighty God, we thank you for being there for us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for preserving us. We thank you, God, for watching over us, for never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you tonight, God, because, God, the truth is without you, mighty God. If you have lost and lose and forget about us, mighty God, we will not be here. Mighty God, if you would have wiped us from your memory, we would not be here on earth. But we thank you, mighty God, to never leave us nor forsake us. Mighty God, if you should have thrown in the towel on some of us, God Almighty, our, our family would have buried us a long time ago. But God, we thank you for who you are, a God of second chances. And God, we thank you for who you continue to be in this world. And God, we just want to tell you thanks for life. Thanks, almighty God, for our lips, our tongue. Thank you, God, for our voice. Mighty God, thank you for the sense of seeing. Thank you, mighty God, for the sense of touch. Thank you tonight, Heavenly Father. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for our feet. We want to thank you for our organs. We want to thank you, God, for our skin, for our cells. Mighty God, for the blood that is flowing through us tonight. We want to give you glory and honor. We just want to tell you thanks, Heavenly Father. Because God, without them, we can't function. And God, without you, they can't function. 
So God, as we come before you tonight, God, we ask you to forgive us for all our sins. The sins that are known and the sins that are unknown. We ask you tonight to forgive us, mighty God, of the thoughts that come to our mind of evil, of sinful thoughts, sinful nature. Forgive us tonight, mighty God. Help somebody, mighty God. Cleanse somebody. Wash somebody, mighty God. Teach us how to abide in your will. Teach us how to grasp, mighty God, your principle and your word. Mighty God, we ask you even tonight, mighty God, that God, the hearts that are bitter, the mind, mighty God, that is confused, that the devil, mighty God, has been wrestling with, mighty God, for that soul to be captured in hell. We ask you tonight, God, that you will send your fire, send your angel to lose somebody mind. Somebody tonight, God, that is going through a phase of depression or through a phase, mighty God, of, of large or through a phase of joining an even organization. We ask you tonight to God to stay step in and save that soul in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and Lord we pray that you save the souls God Almighty that the devil is trying to use to commit murder save the soul mighty God of that spirit that the devil has lain that woman of Delilah or Jezebel save that soul tonight God turn that life around in the name of Jesus God we ask you even now God that you will save the soul mighty God of the Backslidden, mighty God, you will save the soul of that child that don't know wrong from right. Mighty God, you will save that soul that the devil is trying to snatch away. Mighty God, to do evil in this world. Mighty God, save somebody, daughter, save somebody, son, save somebody, nieces and nephews. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, we are depending on you tonight, God, to save a soul. That the devil is trying, mighty God, to destroy with the spirit of suicide. We pray, even now, God, that you will save that person's soul from the demonic plans of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we put every person in your hands tonight, God. And God, every person located in this nation of Jamaica, we put them in your hands tonight, God. And we ask you to watch over over them mighty God protect them from accident protect your daughters and your sons mighty God from the gunshot from the knife stab from the witchcraft mighty God of Daniel we are praying for this nation Jamaica that the devil has launched out an attack against our youths against the people of this nation God we are taking back our people by force in the name of Jesus mighty God you said the righteous suffer violence but mighty God we take it by force tonight we take back our people of this nation we take back our children mind of this nation and God we send fire to every principalities to every powers to every dark agent that is working secretly mighty God we send fire in their rooms around their tables where they gather mighty God to plan against our people to plan against this nation we pray almighty God that you go in some houses and God remove the good men remove the good women save their soul God from the hands of wickedness mighty God we pray that you enter some houses save some manners from prostitution in the name name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth tonight save some grandparents mighty God from working witchcraft we pray tonight God that you will ride in in the men of Jamaica mighty God the men of Jamaica has put down you God and as they have taken up voodoo but God we pray in the name of Jesus that you will shake the men of Jamaica that they know that you are Lord and mighty God we pray tonight 
for the houses the houses that single mothers are the only one mighty god that the child know we pray for those houses that the fathers will start pleading your responsibilities in the name of jesus christ mighty god a house without a father is a house that is incomplete a child life without your father is a child life mighty god that you're gonna have struggles when the father should have been there but god we pray tonight that mighty god you touch the father's heart mighty god touch some baby father heart tonight god that they will begin to look after their kids that they will begin to spend time with their children in the name of jesus christ god we pray tonight mighty god of daniel we come against every tomb order we come against every graveyard spirit we come against mighty god every mother woman every grandmaster we back up their order by the blood of jesus christ god we pray for this community of mark's men of scarlet road we pray for spanish stone bypass we pray for saint catherine god let every gun seize in saint catherine no more innocent blood we come against the plan mighty god of daniel of the grandmasters of this region mighty god we ask the holy ghost the houses mighty god that the witches and the warlocks dwell light them a fire mighty god destroy tonight holy ghost the witches order the witches table the witches houses destroy them that they have no residence mighty god to do their rituals we pray even now jehovah that you will ride in in the schools god our schools need you there are schools in jamaica holy ghost that their children fainting their children passing out and they're not sick they didn't feel ill but the spirits of the enemy that is loose over our schools we bind them up no god we command them to cease in the name of jesus we speak fire we render them powerless now the demonical orders the demonical forces that is messing with our kids mighty god we command them dismiss now in the name of jesus christ we send the blood to every school in every 14 parishes of this nation we send the blood of jesus to locate every principal mighty god every infected teacher mighty god we send the blood to seize them tonight in the name of jesus christ we send the blood of jesus upon every person a pedophile mighty god that want to capture our young girls and our young boys to indulge in the nasty behavior god we ask you tonight god let there be a cease to kidnapping holy ghost we ask you god shut down the portals mighty god we're tired of seeing our young girl going missing we're tired of seeing our young men dying and god we cry out tonight god that you will seize the agents of hell tonight show them that you are god the god of fire the god of judgment the god of wrath god you say in your words that the enemy shall not go and punish and we pray no so the enemy the fire of you tonight god in the mighty name of jesus we are depending on your god for the home your mothers who are crying families who are crying because your daughter your loved one has gone missing 
but God we pray in the name of Jesus that in this 2024 mighty God the percentage of kidnapping will drop rapidly in the name of Jesus Christ we speak it in the ear we God we speak it over this nation mighty God get the, the, the percentage at the end of 2024 when they bring up kidnapping it has drop rapidly it has decreased rapidly in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Lord we pray tonight God that you will continue to watch over us continue mighty God to dwell with us mighty God we thank you for even when some of us are ungrateful to you even when some of us choose not to worship you you continue to be God in our life but God that we pray even now that God you will you will convict some persons online you will convict persons who are in their room in their bed let the fire of the holy ghost convict them tonight god that they will run come to serve you run come to abide in you run come mighty god to come and taste of your goodness we pray in the name of jesus that you have your way tonight god in jesus name amen and amen glory be to god just want to welcome again persons who are joining us late hallelujah for persons who are joining us late online amen both tiktok facebook youtube we send your greetings again amen we greet you in the mighty name of jesus those in america we greet you those in england those who are watching us in canada amen those who are in jamaica we greet you those who are even watching us in the caribbean islands tonight we send greetings to you amen glory be to god and all great america worship center family we greet you in the name of jesus all leaders that are online watching in your different areas your respectable position amen we greet all the clergy's protocol observed to you amen glory be to god I greet my beloved wife who's here. Amen. I just want to make another announcement. Amen. Glory to his name. Remember, people of God, that on the 29th of this month of March at 12 midday, amen, we have our, our youth invasion begin. We have three massive days of youth invasion. We have Good Friday, the Saturday, and the Sunday, which is the 31st. In the morning, we have a divine supernatural service in the night we have the gospel concert amen on the 29th of march at 12 midday we are going to join here and i'm inviting every person near and far glory be to god no matter if you're in west milan there is buses that are coming from west milan there are vehicles that are coming up from montego bay their vehicles coming from St. Thomas, St. Mary, Portland. If you, glory be to God, want to be here, amen, make it your day on the 29th. So the 29th is a day, put it back up, the 29th is a day, glory be to God, of prayer and deliverance, strictly prayer and deliverance. And we need you to bring out your children, mothers, come, amen. If you have families, come bring your nieces, bring your nephews, bring them come. It doesn't matter if they're young or old, bring them come. Glory be to God, we are going to pray for your children. And I say to mothers that are here, glory be to God, we're going to be praying for youths of this nation, Jamaica. We're going to be praying for youths in the world. Amen. And I say to mothers and persons who are coming, grandmothers, when you come, you're going to walk in the spirit of faith. That as you're walking in the spirit of faith, so shall your grandchild or your child be delivered from whatsoever spirit has been lurking in their life, whatsoever spirit has possessed them. Amen. Bring the jobless, bring the hopeless, bring the depressed, bring everyone, come bring the sick, bring the lazy, bring them come the 29th of March. Shall we praise the name of Jesus? The 29th of March, Good Friday. At 12 midday we begin and we end somewhere between 4.30 5 o'clock. Amen. Glory to God. And that day it is free of course. So I'm looking for everybody to be here. 
on the Saturday we have, glory be to God, our youth invasion conference. And we begin at 2 p.m. And we go up to the latest 4.30. Amen. Now, on the Saturday, it's $2,000 for entry. The entry, the $2,000 include a meal. Shall we praise the name of Jesus? Also, on that day, you, be, uh, you can ask any question at all. Any question pertaining to your walk in Christ. You know, there are a lot of you are, who have challenges. You can ask questions. Also, we're going to have a, 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 a session that we have one-on-one -on -one with persons where a few leaders from this ministry and those who are going to be on the panel, glory be to God, you are going to have time to talk to either one person and explain to that person what the main issue is. I'm talking about issues that you can't put on the mic. Questions that you can't put on the mic. Those are going to be, glory be to God, the one-on-one -on -one sessions. And though the leaders who are here and persons who are going to be on the panel, glory be to God, can instruct individuals what to do to get over what, what to do. Glory be to God to get delivered from what and all of that. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. On the Sunday, which is the 31st now, which is the last day of the three day of life transformation. Glory be to God. On the Sunday morning, we have our supernatural divine service that begins at 10 a.m. And at 5 p.m. Sunday evening, we have our youth invasion gospel concert that begins at 5 a.m. 5 p.m. Sorry. Amen. Glory be to God. Tickets for adults is 1500 and for children under 12, right? For children under 12, it's 800. Did I say it right? Yes. Amen. So we're saying to every person, support the conference, support the gospel. I need everybody to turn over for the gospel concert. It's a Sunday night. Amen. It is a what? Sunday night. And the next day is Monday, which is Easter Monday. So you don't have work. Amen. So we're looking forward for you to come and support. We're looking forward for you to come. And let us have one of the most victorious worship session a worship session that shall lead you in a supernatural place amen glory to his name hallelujah glory be to god um as you hear people of god i want to say thanks to the persons who have decided to come on board to help us at the end of every month glory be to god to partner with us in this ministry amen if you look behind where you see work being going on amen and the persons who decide to partner with us at the end of every month by pledging $5,000, this is where your money is going. Beautify in the kingdom of God. Amen. There's a lot more to be done. Amen. Before you, think, when you think vage and come, you're going to see the beauty of it. Shall we praise the name of Jesus? So God is indeed doing a great thing. Amen. So for anybody that is here online and you want to join in, amen, at every end of month to pledge with us, to keep the doors of church open, you can go ahead and do so. Amen. God bless you. I'm coming out of the way now. It's Bible study time. Shall we praise the name of Jesus? And we haven't been in church for almost three weeks. Am I right? It's almost three weeks or two weeks. Three weeks. We haven't been in Bible study for three weeks. Amen. One, I think it's two weeks. Two weeks we, 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 we were offline the Thursday night. One of the Thursday nights I did pray online. But the other two Thursday we wasn't here. And let me tell you, I feel bad not having Bible study. Whether Bible study is full or whether Bible study is empty, I know that there are persons like myself who is looking forward to be fed by the word and with the word. Amen. And it so happened that God bless us with a nice teacher. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. We have two teachers actually. We have evangelist Shonika and then we have Deacon God because if you listen to both of them, they give you word and they have scripture to back their word. Amen. And then you have some other rest of us now that throw in the prophetic and we preach. And then we have a prayer. We have two prayer warriors actually. Minister Grace and Sister Haley. Shall we praise the Lord? And God is raising up some other persons in here. We have heard Sister Judith pray Sunday. And I was like, where is Sister Judith has been hiding for all this time? Shall we praise the name of Jesus? Glory be to God. So God is indeed doing a good work. But I want you to make welcome tonight. Amen. Again, she's no stranger to Bible study and to this podium and to this altar. We welcome again Evangelist Sonica as she come to feed us with the word. And I pray tonight that your spirit may be open 
to receive and begin to apply the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for having me tonight for our continuation of Bible study. And we are still on the book of Matthew. Amen. All right. So tonight we are on Matthew chapter 6. All right, so turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 6. And it reads, we're not going to do the entire chapter tonight. We're doing from verses 1 to 15. All right? So it reads, Take heed, take heed that ye do not do not your arms before men to be seen of them, otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine arm, do not sound the trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may, may have glory of man. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. For if we forgive men their trespasses, our heavenly Father will also forgive you, but if ye forgive not their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Here hence a portion of God's holy word, and we honor it by saying, thanks be to God. Glory be to God. So this is a continuation of Jesus' um, sermon on the mount. Amen? And if you have one of those Bibles that it's highlighted. You know where it's highlighted in red. It's actually Jesus who is speaking here, right? So this is actually the word of God. Amen? All right, so let's explore what Matthew 6 is saying. So this is the sermon on the mount, mount where Jesus instructs his disciple of how to live righteously. Amen? It contains essential teachings from Jesus covering topics such as praying, giving, fasting, and also worldly mindedness. World dead mind. Amen? Amen? All right. So let's look at verse 4, verse 1 to 4, which speaks of giving to the needy. So the scripture, in the scripture, the Lord warns us 
against hypocrisy, right? And outward showing in religious duties. And religious duties, we know, is how we care for the needy, you know, prior to those who are in need, food, giving food to those who are in need, whatever assistance that it might be. Amen? Therefore, whatever we do, we must do it from an inward principle that it may be approved of God and not just to get the praises of men. Amen? In these verses, we are cautioned against hypocrisy in giving alms. And um, the word alms here in the Bible speaks of charity, donations. Amen? So we should take heed of it because it is a subtle sin to get the glory of men, right? And right here, vain glory will creep in to what you are doing before you are even aware of what you're doing. Amen? So the duty is not ne less necessary and excellent for being abused by hypocrites to serve their pride. The doom cri Christ passes at first may seem a promise, but it is their reward, not a reward of God. And it is also a poor reward. You may have heard where persons might use this, this term. If you do good, then good will follow you. Right? So, you do not have to ask for anything in return whenever you do good to others. Right? Because God sees it. Right? Whatever you do in, in secret, the Lord will will see it in secret and he will reward you openly right so whenever you give somebody anything you don't need to ask back or even expect to get back something from that person amen because your reward is not from man your reward is from god amen even when you give it to your enemies right not because it's your enemy you would want to exalt yourself and say oh you know i give so and so a shirt or a pants no you give it from a place of willingness amen not expecting to get back anything so we should not expect to get anything from whomever we render charity to right we do not do things to be seen by men for when we do these things to be seen by men and not of god it is not acknowledged by God. Amen? Amen? When we take least notice of our good deeds ourselves, God, God makes the most notice of it. Amen? So when God is rewarding you, he will reward you not as a master who gives his servants what he earned and no more. Right? Your father would reward you bounty, bountifully as his son that serves him, right? So when God is rewarding you, he doesn't measure up anything that he's given you, right? It's not like your daily job, you know, your work, X hours, and you know that after this X hours, you're going to get X amount of pay, God is not like that. So you might just give a small thing to a person and it, and it is valued greatly by God, right? So no matter what it is, you give willingly. And whenever you do things for persons, you're actually doing it for God, right? Because that is the purpose that we are here, you know, to continue his duty. Because if he was on earth, this is what he would have been doing. So it's on us to do what the Lord would do if he was here and in matthew 25 verse 40 it said truly i tell you whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine you did it for me so if you see a brother and sister in need you know don't just look at it away and and you know pass them by do whatever you can for them because guess what when you're doing it you're not just doing it because it is just for doing sake you're doing a, 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 
and, and charity that God expects you to do for your brother and sister. And you're doing it for God himself. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. Because remember, he's a spirit, you know. He was here in the flesh, but then he has gone back to be with his father. So we are here. We have whatever can connect to the flesh out here, right? So in order for persons to, to be reached, we are here to stand in the gap, to reach out to the persons as the Holy Spirit instructs us to. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. So, God... With God, there are bonuses, there are incentives, right? So, as in your, your, your job, whatever you do, you know, you get the pay for whatever work you do. But with God, you do a small thing and you get more than you even could have even asked or even imagined to get back from that one little thing that you do. Glory be to God. Psalms 41 verse 1 said, Blessed is the one who considers the poor. For in the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. Glory be to God. A time is going to come when we might need help ourselves, right? But based on the life that you live, determine the reward that you will get back in those times. Glory be to God. And we're sure we can see that many times happening in our lives and to persons around us all right so let's look at verse six sorry verse five to eight and this is where jesus speaks about prayer all right so the first four verses was about giving to the needy now these verses are about prayer now it is taken for granted that everyone who are disciples of christ prays right we have, all right, so have you ever seen a living man that does not breathe? Never. You can't see a living. Once you're living, there must be breath, right? There's no life without breath, right? Even if oxygen comes through, through a machine, there's still breath. So there's no living man that can live without breath. So as a Christian, there should not be a Christian that doesn't pray. Amen? Amen? Because prayer is what helps to connect you. What is prayer? Prayer is communicating with God. It keeps that connection line going with God. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. So Christian pray in order to keep communication with our Father. Right? If we are prayerless, then we are also graceless, right? So God's grace is usually defined as an unserved favor. This grace cannot be earned, right? It is something that is given freely. Can you imagine? You know, for work feet, you know, it is given freely, as long as you accept Christ. Glory be to God. We can count on God's grace. Amen. And this grace built a bridge in our relationship with him. Right? And in order to have a relationship, communication is an essential part of our relationship with God. Glory be to God. We communicate to God through prayer. Amen. Now... The scribes and the Pharisees were guilty of two great faults in prayer. Amen? And these two, two faults were vain glory and vain repetition. Amen? Repetitions of words in and, themsel in and of themselves and in whatever prayer points they make. Right? In Matthew... 6 verse 7 the scripture that is read it is said that when you pray do not keep on babbling like the pagans for they think they will be heard because of their many words right I'm sorry if we are not seriously communicating with god from our hearts then we are not praying in a godly sense 
glory be to God. And when we speak about babbling here, it speaks of words that is repeated, right? Repeated word that does not engage God, right? These are words that have no relation to God. Amen? You're just doing them just for men to see, you know, that you can pray. Glory be to God. In Luke 11, verse 18, it speaks of God knowing what you need before you even come to him in prayer, right? So there's no need for babbling. It's not necessary, right? Because in a minute sense, you try to prove something to God. God don't know your needs. Him know before you even come to him, right? So you don't need to fix up anything, Glory be to God. So prayer has power and meaning because of our relationship with our Father. Amen? Glory be to God. A real prayer is not made in the effort to manipulate God through babbling so that God can give us whatever we are asking. A real prayer is one that is built through and upon the relationship with God. Glory be to God. So when you pray, you pray out of a place where, you know, you know God and God know you. There is a relationship. There is a connection. Glory be to God. So in keeping with Jesus' teaching that motives matter as much as actions, right? Matthew 5 verse 20 tell us, For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Wow. Right? And in, in Matthew 6, which we are on, verse 1, it encourages us to take heed that we do not do arms before men, but... To be, seen, to be seen of them, otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Right? So when we do things, we don't do them because we want men to see them. Right? Because our reward is not from men. It is from our heavenly Father. Glory be to God. So God is far from being wroth. He's far from being stirred up by lengthy words. Glory be to God of our prayers. You know, God wants your prayer to be from a place of pureness. Amen? So many times we might find person praying to be seen by men. You know, they would fix up the look of fancy prayer and probably go Google up some big words for drop in because, you know, you want to be seen that, oh, I can pray. You know, it makes no sense you're praying even for somebody and they don't even understand what you're praying about. Right? You pray from a pure place. You pray from your heart. Glory be to God. So prayer should not be seen as something that you want to be exalted for, right? It should be seen as something trying to reach out to God for yourself or even for someone else, right? God does not acknowledge this kind of prayer. The Bible speaks of, most, of the most powerful intercession, right? Those which are made with groaning that cannot be uttered. There are some times when you are praying and you just can't find the word. You know, you are praying for even yourself and you are tired of some situation and you can't find the word and you just start groaning. Right? There is no word coming but guess what? The Holy Spirit understands, God understands what is happening there. It is coming from a place of pureness. It is coming from your heart. Glory be to God. And Romans 8 verses 26 says, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Right? In a time when you're tired, you know, you're tired of the situation, the Holy Spirit helps us. Right? We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Glory be to God. So, we should all study what is shown in the frame of mind which is in which our prayer should be offered and learn daily from Christ how to pray. And you know what is the good thing? Christ taught us how to pray. Amen? 
Glory be to God. So now let's look at how Jesus taught us how to pray the Lord's Prayer. And this is in verse 9 to 14. 13, sorry. All right, but we're going straight to 15 here. All right, so Christ saw it needful to show his disciple what must be commonly the matter or the method of their prayer. Amen? Not that we are to tie up the use of this only. So it's not that we are limited to these words, right? Or if it should be always be that way, right? So without a doubt, it is very good to be used. As most persons, when they have prayed, then you know they would go back to pray the Lord's Prayer afterward, right? It has a much little, it has m much in a little, and it is used acceptab acceptably no further than it is used with understanding and without being needlessly repeated. Remember the Bible speak about vain repetition, right? So you don't need to repeat. All right? So the petition are six. So there are six petitions in this prayer, right? First three are related more expressingly to God and, and his honor, right? And the last three to our own concern, both temporal and spiritual. Now, this prayer teaches us to seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. And we know that all other things shall be added, added afterward, right? So after the things of, of God of God's glory, kingdom, and will, we pray for the needful support and comfort of this present life, right? Every word here is a lesson in it, right? We ask for bread that teaches us soberity and temperance. We ask only for bread, not for what we do not need. Amen? We ask for bread that teaches us honesty and industry. We do not ask for bread for others, of others, right? Nor bread of deceit, as in Proverbs 31, verse 27. But the bread honestly gotten. Amen? We ask for our daily bread, which teaches us constantly to depend upon divine providence right we beg god to give it to us not to sell it to us not to lend it to us but we ask it that he give it unto us glory be to god so this teaches us compassion for the poor also and also that we are to pray for our families you know if you notice in the prior it doesn't says give me it says give us Right? Not give me. So it doesn't teach us that prayer should be selfishly done for yourself. Right? We should be praying for everyone. Praying for others. Glory be to God. So we should be praying for our family. We pray that God would give it to us this day. Which teaches us to renew the desires of our souls towards God. As the wants of our bodies are renewed also. We are taught to eat, the dr eat and dread sin while we hope for mercy to distress ourselves and to rely on the providence of grace, providence and grace of God to keep us from it and to prepare and to be prepared to resist the, temp the tempter and not to be tempted of others. Here is a promise that if you forgive, your heavenly Father will also forgive. Amen? We must forgive as we hope to be forgiven. Those who desire to find mercy with God must show mercy to brethren. Amen? Christ came into this world as a great peacemaker. Not only to reconcile us to God, but to reconcile us to each other amen so a lot of persons they would 
cast you down, they would tear you down, they would break you down because of something that you have done to them, you know? But guess what? And they would hold this for so long and not letting it go. But Christ came as the peacemaker. He came to bridge that gap, to break whatever the enemy put there because it's not God put it there. It's the enemy that put it there, you know, to separate you, right? So Christ came to be a peacemaker of this. And if you want to be forgiven by your heavenly father, you also have to learn to forgive your brothers. You know, sometimes... Things might be so hurtful, you know, and hard to let go. But you have to think of it. If I want my forgiveness from God, then may I have to let it go. Right? It's going to go hard and trust me, it's going to take a while, you know. But if you really want forgiveness, there's nothing hard in asking God to help you to forgive. And remember, anything that you ask him of, glory be to God, he's willing and able to help you with. Amen? Glory be to God. So let's look deeper into the Lord's prayer. Now it begins with our Father who art in heaven. We start this prayer by professing our core religious belief that God is our heavenly Father. Amen? The one who is all knowing and all powerful. Right? Notice that Jesus did not instruct us to say, my father, but stressed us to say, our father. Remember, it's not a selfish thing, you know. We're thinking about our brothers and our sisters. Amen? So it's our father, right? So the scripture, the scripture scholar John Muir explained that in God's kingdom, we do not, we don't live as isolated individuals but we experience god's fatherhood as a m as members of the church right as the family of jesus amen this remind us that we recognize all those around us as children of god and treat them accordingly amen it goes further to say hallowed be thy name now, hallowed is another word for holy and sanctified. So when we say, hallowed be thy name, we are not only telling God, I recognize you are holy, but more importantly, we are asking that his name be recognized by everyone throughout the world as being the ultimate holy power. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. And all will, will, will know him to be righteous, powerful, and everyone's one true God. Amen? There's only one God. Amen? Glory be to God. It goes further again to say, thy kingdom come. This petition has a twofold meaning. First, we are asking God's kingdom. Amen? Amen? where there is only goodness and honesty and love for one another to surround us in our everyday life. And secondly, we are praying for the fulfillment of the Lord's promise that he will return at the end of time and grant us our eternal life. Amen? It went further again to say, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now we pray these words asking God's grace to move to move us to do his will throughout our life. Amen. Remember, you know, it's thy will, not my will. Sometimes as children of God, we think it's our will. No, it's thy will. Amen. Glory be to God. So that means doing all the things that will please our Heavenly Father. Even things that are difficult. Amen? Glory be to God. So even the difficult of things, as long as it's in God's will, right? We are here to ensure that we please the Lord. Amen? So if it's even to give up something, you know? You have some time, you may, you, you may be... You ever find yourself going into a parking lot, a supermarket parking lot, and it might be the one parking space? And somebody first you for going at a parking spot, right? 
instead of you trying to quarrel with that person, you just say, you know, go ahead. And you find somewhere else to park, right? Because it's God's will. If you follow that person, then you're going to be in an argument. And that's what the, the, the devil would want, you know, to start up something, to, to start the flame, you know, and you know where that can lead, right? So it's God's will. You just say, Lord, let your will be done, you know? Who knows? That person driving at the, the, the spot, and when him come out, him car scratch and wish by you go park your car. Not not do your car. Amen? Glory be to God. Sometimes God does some things in our life. It just amazes us. It's amazing. You know, so we are here to ensure that the will of God is accomplished. Glory be to God. Now, the, 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 the prior further went on to say, give us our daily bread. Amen? Here we recognize that all things we need come from God. Amen? We are asking God to continue to give us not only food that we need for nourishment of our body, but also the bread of life. Amen? And remember in John 6 verse 35, it says, I am the bread of life. Whoever come to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Amen? What a wonderful savior we have. Amen? So once we have Christ, there's nothing that we will lack. Amen? As long as we believe in him, as long as we trust him, and as long as we remain obedient to him. Amen? It also says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now, this is a very tough one. Amen? A very tough and a very rough one. Right? It may be easy to ask God to forgive us of our trespasses. Right? Forgive us of our sins. Right? But... God in his infinite wisdom teaches us that in order for him to forgive us of our wrongdoings, amen, we must first do what? Forgive those who have done us wrong, right? We have to forgive those who have hurt us, as we just stated, right? So God knows that this is difficult, right? And he teaches us that when there is bitterness and anger in our hearts, right? There is room, there is no room for love to fill our hearts, right? So we have to get rid of that. We can't harbor all of those things inside, amen? Because there's no way you can have love within you. Remember, you know, God is love, right? And you want the peace of God. You want all of God within you. And he's not going to dwell within you if you're harboring these things, you know? Remember, sin separates us from God, you know? Sin separates us, and we don't want to be separated from this love, right? So we have to remove all those things that would cause a blockage or a separation from God. Amen? So we have to get rid of the bitterness, get rid of the hurt, the anger, all of those things, you know? And make room, right, for the love within our hearts. Amen? So... How can we ask God to be merciful and forgive us of our sins if we are holding grudges or refuses to forgive someone who has done us wrong? How? Right? There's no way. Remember, there's a criteria. If you don't forgive, then the Lord will not forgive you. Amen? Amen. So forgiving someone is often easier said than done. Right? But only God can give us the strength to do it. And this is through prayer. Amen? Through prayer, we are asking God to give us the strength so we can forgive this brother, forgive this sister. As trust me, sometimes it's hurting. That's why, you, that's why there is so many suicidal happening, you know, because of hurt. And the devil build up all these, these pain, these hurt within these individuals because they fail to let go you know they fail to forgive but we can't allow the devil to win amen can't allow the devil to win so we have to pray to our heavenly father to ask him to help us to release 
or relieve ourselves of these things. Amen? So we can forgive our brothers and sisters. Amen? All right. So the prior go also go on to say, and lead us not into temptation. Now, temptation and sin go hand in hand, right? When we come face to face with temptation, it can sometimes be difficult to resist. Amen? And that's why we need our Father, amen, to set up that roadblock and lead us far from the path of temptation. That's why we have to make sure that we walk with Jesus. Amen? We have to ensure that we walk with him. Amen? Walk with the word. Amen? So when the enemy comes, you have the word as your bucketive. Amen? You have the word to deliver you from temptation. Amen? And the last part of the prayer said, but deliver us from evil. Amen? Now, evil is an unfortunate reality in our world. Right? The devil is always trying to tempt us and to make it his full-time job to look for ways to steer us down the right path and unto the wrong one. Amen? The devil has no power over God. And when we pray to God for protection against all that is evil, he will shield us always from it. Amen? Glory be to God. All right, so we are almost to the end. Amen? And we are on time as well. All right, so we are going to look at just a bit of recap. So in this scripture, it speaks about giving, right? And that's in the first four verses, verses right? It also speaks about prayer, which is from verse 5 to 8. Um, it also gives us warnings, right? So in giving... Jesus warns us against doing charitable deeds, amen, merely for public display. Instead, believers should give in secret, knowing that God who sees their heart will reward them genuinely, openly. Amen? So you don't need to give so that Lady Campbell can sister me a give $25,000. Are a hundred thousand dollar. No, you don't need to do that because God sees your heart. He sees whatever you're doing. So you don't need no public um, approval from nobody. Amen? Amen. It also teaches us about prayer. So Jesus provides the Lord prayer as a model. Amen? Amen. He emphasizes sincerity and private communion with God. Now, the writer focused on Jesus' instruction to pray in secret. Amen? Amen? The left hand, not knowing what the right hand does, symbolize discreet, unpretentious giving. Amen? Look how close your hand is there. Look how close. And if your left hand is not supposed to know where your right hand is, see how the baby is clap. If your left hand is not supposed to know, where your right hand I do. That's how discreet you are supposed to be in your prayer, in your giving. Amen? Glory be to God. It also teaches us about the warnings, right? So the chapter emphasizes inner devotion over outward display. Jesus calls for authentic prayer, fasting, and Arms giving. We haven't touched the fasting part as yet, because that's in verse 16. Right? Um, Jesus warns against practicing righteousness for the show, right? And encourage secret. You see how much time it I repeat? Secret acts of charity, prayer, and fasting. Amen? He warns against hypocrisy, and hypocrisy are things that, you know, you're doing things that in public it show as if 
it's a total thing from when you're in secret. So you put on a whole show for man for say, but yet still, this is not who you truly are. Amen? Right? Um, it warns against urging believers to seek God's approval rather than human applause. Amen? Glory be to God. So in summary, Matthew 6 provides practical guidance for righteous living. It emphasizes sincerity, humility, and devotion to God. Amen? It addresses both external actions and internal motives. Inviting believers to ask your heavenly father of his reward rather than earthly claim. Amen? Amen? So you are here to get the reward from your father and not that of men. Amen? Amen. Now that concludes our lesson for Matthew 6 verse 1 to 15. Amen? Amen. We'll pick up next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you know the usual. I have questions. Amen? All right, so the first one here, as we perform acts of righteousness, what should we avoid? I've stressed this over and over. What should we avoid when performing acts of righteousness? That is it. That's one. Give me another one. Well, you can put it that way. It should be discreet. But um, so one is doing it for the purpose of being seen by men, right? And two, acting like the hypocrites in the synagogues and in the streets. So they do it openly and not discreet, as you said, right? All right, how can we ensure that God will reward us for our righteous acts? You're getting there, you're getting warm. <laughs> As I said, once it's genuine, he will see. So by doing them in secret, where only the Father can see it, right? Not openly for man to see it and to applaud you. So you don't want a human praise. Amen? All right. How else does Jesus teach us to give prayer? How else does Jesus teach us to give prayer? And pray, sorry. To give and pray. Hmm? No. There are two, two things that the, 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 the Pharisees are guilty of. Let me, let me, that, is an, that is a clue. No, no, I'm not looking for that one. I'm speaking as it relates to prayer. We went through it. Two faults in prayer. <laughs> and I even just discussed one of them, you know. You see, I'll be a love. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one is when you're giving, right? Do not let your left hand know, right? What your right hand is doing as we give. And two, do not use vain repetition as we pray. Right. All right. So what is the likely purpose of the Lord's 
prior? What was it meant for? Or what is it was seen as? Mm -hmm. What was the purpose of it? It's close. It was a model prayer. Right. So it's just a model of how you're supposed to pray. Right? All right. And lastly, now, of the things in the Lord's prayer, on what does Jesus elaborate on? No. And if you read, no, I'm going to give it up. No. Yeah, when stress pan. Yeah. Forgiveness. Remember down in the last part, you know, the prayer stops at 13, you know. But it still go all the way down to 15, you know. Yeah. It go all the way down to 15 because it makes sure same stress that part, right? We, the need for us to forgive others of their trespass against us, right? Because if we don't forgive others, then our Heavenly Father will also not forgive you, right? All right, so that concludes our lesson for tonight. I do hope you guys have learned so i'm sure it's not hope i know you guys have learned something tonight amen glory be to god i know hand over back to prophet see you next week as we conclude matthew chapter six and go on to seven amen uh, uh, and sister evangelist shonega came out nice today in her in her uniform <laughs> amen Yes, bless the God, bless the God, bless the God. Amen. For persons who are watching, we had a good time. Amen. And we thank God for our night teacher. Amen. As I always say, and I will ever stress it. Amen. Like myself, yeah, I'm underneath the fivefold ministry, but there are times when the Lord is raising up others, you should use them. And do not want to be self-centered at all the time. Amen. And there's coming a time when Lady Campbell will come to you as well. Uh, amen. And we're going to give her, not because she's my wife, but we're going to give her the same treatment as we give every single person that God is using. Give them their time that God is using them to shine the light on others. Amen. Because as I always say, I, I will do Bible study different and people get it and then God raise up somebody else to give you a deeper insight of the word than what I am teaching. And then God will send somebody else to give you a, a, a deeper, deeper revelation. All right? So that's who God is. You, you know, he likes to give you the simple part of the word and somebody come to break down the word deeper than somebody come to bring it to a theological level. So that's who God is. He always is going to equip persons vessel who are available and want to be used all right so persons who are on tiktok persons who are on youtube facebook we want to say to you tonight glory be to god that i hope that you will apply the word that has been taught from matthew chapter 6 amen remember the first four verse god teach us how to give and when you give nobody should know so all of you who are give people and a chat about it you're wicked Amen. And all of you who are giving people things and streaming it live and taking it picture, it is wrong. If you're doing it, it should not be publicized. Amen. But I, I, I can't even say I don't understand why some people do it because you have some people when they're giving an evangelist, they want to make sure they have their money gone. And it, I think the world, because the world has been strained from the Bible and the word of God so much, People have now reached a place. And I think it's just reality because even some of us in here that are here, we can say that we have given some people our, our some something. And the other day, they're giving them things they would have used it to do what they said they wanted to do. You know, but because they use it to the XY, people just say, you know what? If Maria go help somebody who are homeless or somebody who are in need, me why you show me what to do. 
You understand? So I, I think because even social media, people just go social media to get it done. But if we were living by the biblical scripture from beginning, then we'll be all right. People wouldn't have to publicize anything and people wouldn't be freed to even, you know, send their money or give their money to help out anybody. But because we have strayed from the word of God, we are seeing things publicized these days. But the Bible said, if you give me a shoes, and you go publicize and you give me a shoes, you shall not be blessed. You shall not receive from God. It not means this so the Bible. Go read Matthew chapter 6. Amen. And the Bible also teaches us to pray. It gives us a model. As you will call it now, an instruction, a book. You know, like when you buy something, like, you know, like when you buy an iPhone or a phone, it comes with a little book underneath it, the book of instruction where you can go to learn certain things. Yes, the prayer that God prayed in Matthew chapter 6 is a model. And as evangelist was stressing on it, yes, man, him tell you, if your heart dot you have a people, him can't answer you. He can't forgive you. Let me put it as simpler. Let me put it simpler. If you have up your mother and you refuse to forgive her, maybe she do something when you have pitney. She maybe not treat you good. Because we know in these days you have parents who love one pitney more than the other. Yes. If you have her up for that and I forgive her, God say now nah, forgive you. If you have up your own pitney, God say now nah, forgive you. Anybody at all in general you have up. Are you willing not to forgive them? Read Matthew chapter 6 going down to verse 15. The Bible said, if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters, so I, your father in heaven, will not forgive you. So some of you, you can pray from now to thy kingdom come. If you don't forgive, sir, if you don't forgive who you have up, God can't answer your prayer. Are you hearing me? Forgiveness is key. Forgiveness is like grace. It's sufficient. It never run out. At all times, ask God to teach you how to forgive and to forgive whosoever has committed wrong against you. Doesn't matter how harsh it is, how much it pain you, how much it hurt you, how much it gets you hungry and miserable. Tell God to teach you how to forgive them. Because if you don't forgive them, you will die and go to hell without God forgiving you of your sins. It's not me who said it. Read the word of the Lord. Amen. And the Bible also speaks about the Pharisees. The hypo we're not touching that topic tonight. The hypocrites. Yes. I'm talking to you. Watching me right now, telling me that I chat to my boy, you can't say it to my face. The hypocrites. Amen. God talk about the hypocrites in Matthew chapter 6 as well. You cannot be a hypocrite. Amen. And believe you're going to read from Christ. It is wrong. And as, as my spiritual father, he has been teaching some powerful topics the other day. And he, he, he found a scripture. I don't remember where he find it. But it speaks about the grace of God and the grace that God has placed on persons. On, on, on people who he's using. So let me bring it. Let me bring it. Give me a, give a breakdown. So the verse was saying, I don't remember exactly the verse. Where it's taken from. But let me just give you a summary. The verse is basically saying, the honor and grace that God placed on his servant's life, if you as an individual who follow that person that the grace is on, if you're a hypocrite against that person, you can't read from their grace. If you chastise that person, you can't read from their grace. Anybody know anything about grace? Grace is something that acts by itself. It speaks for itself. Grace is something like a weight then. So grace would be based on the grace that is on evangelist Shonika life. You will know that she carried the weight of teaching. So a pastor who preach, only preach the word, cannot, cannot, listen now. I didn't say teach the word, I said preach the word. A pastor who only preach the word, they are not operating in the five-four ministry. They only preach the word, right? That person cannot contest the grace that is on the teacher's life because the teacher is the one who dissect the word and impart the word for people to understand. When the preacher preached the word as it's written, now a teacher is somebody who receives revelation, who receives um, um, the ability to break down the words in ways that you can understand. Understand what I'm saying? So the grace is basically an example of the weight that somebody carries in the spirit. 
Amen. And he has been, um, Apostle Dr. Ron Carnegie has been doing some teaching on the grace. And trust me, when you look at some things, then we wonder now why the churches are like how it is. And why people keep on outside looking in and say, how is it that you're going to church every Sunday, but yet still, you're not, you're, you're not benefiting. We don't see you looking no different. If you ever check some of the people, them life for them are talk about, them are hypocrite. If you ever check some of them, 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 them mount no clean towards them pastor or towards them leader, towards whosoever shepherd over them. And that's what the, the teaching was about when he was doing it. He's saying that everybody that is a member of a church wants to reap from the grace. And some might be in the church for years and don't reap because of their mentality and what they speak. And members will say, uh, in, um, visitors come and reap from the grace and get bad mind. But he's saying that if you learn to honor the grace of God, then you will learn to honor the grace that God plays on other people's life so you can reap from it, you know? But we're still on the book of Matthew chapter 6, hypocrites. I say to you tonight, don't fall yourself in the zone of a hypocrite, but fall yourself in doing good and abiding in the principle and walking in the word of God so God can bless you. Amen? Glory be to God. We are... I'm going to close our Bible study now. And we won't be singing no song, but bow your heads as I close. A 30 second prayer in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for mighty God what you have given unto us tonight. What we have, you have taught us tonight. We thank you for the word. Mighty God, we thank you for the teacher. We thank you for those who are online. We thank you for those who are in the house. Mighty God. And Lord, we pray right now. Mighty God, as we are about to leave your sanctuary, mighty God, and go to our different residence, we ask you, mighty God, for blood coverage. Mighty God, you take the wheel. You be the driver tonight. You cover that vehicle in the name of Jesus. You cover, mighty God, every person that is on their way home from work. Every person that is in their dwelling tonight. Cover them underneath your blood. Mighty God, we ask you right now, God, that you will teach us Mighty God, and help us to apply the word and to live in the word daily. Mighty God, teach somebody how to worship you. Teach somebody, mighty God, how to forgive. Let them know the first step of forgiving is acknowledging that you are God and they need to walk in forgiveness. Teach them, mighty God, that to forgive somebody only take their mouth to be open and come to you in prayer asking you, mighty God, to teach them how to forgive and teaching mighty God how them how to forgive is them re relieving mighty God are removing whatsoever somebody has done to them in the name of Jesus Christ and God we thank you for those who are watching on social media we thank you for those who continue to partner with the ministry to help us mighty God to reach your people and God let your will be done in our life now and forevermore in Jesus name amen and amen we love you everybody thanks for watching gmwc amen god bless you and god keep you for the rest of this week